I am Brendan Donaldson, and in this episode, I want to show how to debug XJS and VS Code. I'll start off by setting up a Webpack launcher, and then two, I want to set up a Chrome launcher. After that, I'm going to go through the debugging process, and then I'm going to show how to use breakpoints. So let's get started. Okay, so what I've done is opened up VS Code, and I open up the folder of the generated project that I generated in the first episode, and I'll leave a link to that episode below in the description of this video. So if you wanna see how to generate a project, go to that link. So from there, I've opened up the files that I've generated in the first episode, and what I wanna point out is the package.json. What I wanna point out here is the NPM start and what it does. Well, first off, it does this cross environmental shell, what makes development for multiple platforms in, a, in the Sencha scripting environment a little bit easier to do. And I won't explain the specifics, but there's a, that you can ignore pretty much. But what happens here is it this delegates to npm run dev. So that delegates to this argument here. And what we're going for is the Webpack dev server, and this starts up the development environment. So what I wanna do is instead of running npm start, start, and let me just do that for example here. I'm gonna go into the terminal in VS Code, which is nice and handy, and I'm gonna run npm start just to show the, our, the console output, and I'm going to replicate this in the launcher environment with VS Code in a minute. Okay, so it automatically launches up a browser and for your de development environment from npm start. Okay, so what I wanna do is transfer this, uh, these commands into the launchers. What does that mean? So I'm gonna terminate this process with control C. And what I wanna do is go to the debug environment or debug view. And I'm gonna look at these configurations at the top. What I can add here are launchers. And how would I do that? Typically I can hit on the gear. Well, there's no launchers added, so it wants me to add an initial launcher by default. So I'm just gonna select Chrome. So it will create the file. And what does that mean? So over here, .vs code, it creates the file launch.json. So I'm gonna erase this configuration because I'm gonna copy and paste in the code. And by the way, you can find this code below in the video description. I'll leave a link to it. So you can easily copy it and paste it in your code. And you won't have to change anything, but maybe one thing depending on the version you have. And I'll explain that more in a minute. So I'm gonna delete this and I've already saved what I wanna copy in my readme here. So I'm just gonna select this. You don't have to remember this. This is, you go to the link in the video description if you wanna do it quickly, or you can pause it and uh, see what the code is here. Okay, so what I wanna do is go back to the launch.json and I'm gonna paste in the launchers. And I'm gonna make this console output a little smaller down below. And here we have the first launcher, which is this um, piece of code is a node launcher and it's gonna launch the webpack dev server uh, .js process. And in that process, it passes some arguments and let me just compare. So if I go to package.json, if I run npm run dev, it starts a web dev server with argument environmental variable verbose and it's set to no. And this environmental variable environment is set to development. And so those two arguments, I'm gonna transfer that to my code here. So just like so, I have the environmental variable argument development and verbose here, all set to set just like it would in the package.json. But what's different is I wanna eliminate the browser starting by default. So. I'm gonna pass along browser as equal to false, and I'm gonna set the env variable. So what does that mean? So this variable is basically passed to the webpack instructions file, and this webpack config.js, and it may be named a little bit differently depending on your application system, but with Sencha, it's webpack.config.js. At least that's the default template. And so in here, there's a minor issue now this will be repaired in a future release, but I just want to show you this, where that environmental variable gets passed. So here it is, it's passed in as an object. Here's the browser property. So it's if it's undefined, 
or if it is defined, then we're gonna say, okay, we're just gonna check it and, and see if it's valid JSON, which true and false are. But in this case, if false or XOR are true, it, this value doesn't work. So I just need to erase and or true here and I can terminate with a semicolon and that will pr properly, um, uh, this, this statement here will evaluate properly now. So it'll work. So now I can pass that browser variable which passes to the browser profile which is then uh, passed below to the Xt Webpack plugin. And I won't go into this in great detail, but there's, there's some other properties in this object that you can configure and pass along to change your development process. But today we don't need to concentrate on that because we want to add breakpoints. I want to show you how to do breakpoints and inspect the object and stack in a minute. Okay, but to start with, we have to add the launchers to the launch.json. Okay, so back to the launch.json, I have added the environmental of the arguments that come from package.json plus the browser is saying I don't want to I don't want that to auto start because I'm going to start the chrome uh, the chrome I want to start chrome with this launcher here so I can add the debugging process and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment okay so to go on there's some other arguments and you can find these argument definitions in these and this notes and the, this code here these two launchers will be in the link below in the video description and i won't cover these in great detail but this add a little bit of flavor to the debugging process but what's important here to catch is that auto attach child processes because when what when the webpack dev server starts it starts uh, command compiling process and we want to capture that output and output it into the console below or terminal below as well and this allows uh, me to do that okay so the second launcher I want to launch Chrome and the reason why I add this Chrome launcher is I want to start up the Chrome with it connected the JavaScript of I want to start up a JavaScript debugger environment that is connected to this IDE. And I'm going to describe this a little bit more detail in a moment when it does connect and then it marshals the console output and connects the breakpoints and you can inspect the variables just like you would in the Chrome Dev Tools. Okay, so now that I've added these, I'm going to go to the debug perspective on the left here. I'm going to click on debug and then I got to save this file so they sh the, the, the launcher show up in the top left. So I have debug app and launch Chrome. So what I want to do is just select debug app because I have to do two launchers. Now you can do a link task here. Now there's other ways you can launch your environment and I'm not going to talk about those today because I just wanted to show how to start the Webpack server and Chrome to, uh, in the dev tool launchers here. Okay, so I've instantiated or started the process debug app. And you can see that does the same exact thing that npm start does. It starts up the process so you can debug uh, the XJS application. Okay, and now I can see it's compiled successfully, but it did not auto start the browser. So what I wanna do is then start, start up Chrome. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch Chrome and hit run. And this launches up Chrome and you can see that it launched Chrome just like it would with npm start. Okay, so what if I wanted to inspect the variables when I go to the personnel and I wanna select, and before this confirmation comes up, I wanna inspect what the, the variables, the select statement and what it does there. So I'm gonna to go to this code and add a breakpoint before that so I can pause and break on the execution of this process. So and in this event. So what I want to do is go back uh, to, to Chrome here. Let me just stop these processes just so I can repeat that the, the process all together. So I'm going to stop the process. I'm going to start it one more time just to get, for good effect. So I'm going to go to the debug process and I'm going to start it up again. And you can see over here to the right, if there's some controls that you can pause the process, you can stop, and, and control it easily. Instead of having to go control C to stop it, you hit the red square there. 
So now that the first process is running, I'm gonna run the second process again. And I'm gonna go launch Chrome, and I'm gonna hit run and that'll debug it. So it opens up the browser. I'm gonna go back to the code. This time I'm gonna inspect the source, which is in the app directory under source. And then I'm gonna look for which is the view and I'm gonna look for the controller because that's where the events are. On item selected, I wanna break on this process here. So when before this confirmation dialog is shown or displayed, I wanna break and I wanna inspect sender, record, and whatever other variables or objects are available to inspect at this time. So let's go back to the browser. And what I wanna do is go to personnel view and I wanna select, oh, there it goes. It breaks on the process. Now, if I go back to the debug perspective over here, up at the top, I have the variable inspection window and I have the call stack. I can see where the call originated from and I, I can climb the tree here and inspect the processes or this process, which is fantastic for debugging. So I'm gonna minimize watch there and just make this variable window a little bit bigger. And I can see if I look into it, I can see the objects and, and values that are available to me at this point at this time in the process, which makes debugging fantastic. So if I wanna continue, I'm gonna go up to the controls here and then I just wanna hit continue, just like I would do in the Chrome Dev Tools. So that's fantastic, it's really easy to debug. So basically, if I'm gonna just review the process real quick, so I'm gonna terminate, let's just say I wanna go and debug another process real quick, just so I can show this for good effect. So I'm gonna go home to personnel and I wanna look at the code and I've gotta look for JavaScript code, not the configuration code. So if I go to home, I could look for routing in here. Where is the router? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search for the router. I don't remember where the router is. So let's just pretend, go search, route, and then here's the routes. And I can see here's the route process. So I'll just break here anywhere in this code. And I'm gonna go back and I'll press on personnel. Oh, right, there we are. So this route, main route of the process. Now I, I'll cover this in greater detail in future episodes, but I just wanted to show that you could pause in the execution of some other event. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and continue and I can just click on that uh, breakpoint again and it erases it. Or if I can go back to the debug and the breakpoints are down here. So if I, I can focus on where I was and then disable it, enable it. And I can also, what's nice is I can catch uncaught exceptions and all exceptions, which are fantastic notes when you're looking for errors or exceptions that are not caught with, try, with a try statement. Um, so that's excellent. So basically, so if I go back to, to the package.json, you can run npm start from the terminal, that's one way to do it, or you can transfer these launchers or this launching sequence or the launcher sequences here to the debug environment where I can in where I can start the processes from this configuration launcher dialog right at the top. So I can launch the debugging of the application and then I can launch Chrome. And the reason why I launch Chrome here is I want to be able to connect the IDE with the, uh, I wanna connect the IDE with the Chrome Dev Tools. Now, one thing I forgot to uh, talk about in the earlier on is actually, how do you get the plugin for Chrome debugging? So that's one thing you have to install. So I'm gonna go into the installer and just review that real quick. You can just search for Chrome and you wanna install the Chrome debugger, so or debugger for Chrome. So I've already installed it, I didn't install it in this episode, but if, if you need some more instructions, there's quite a few good instructions. Just hit uh, install, reload, and you, you have the Chrome installer. So that concludes this episode on just simply debugging and launching the dev process in VS Code to debug an XJS application. So thanks for watching. Thanks for just hanging out with me today and listening to how to debug the XJS application in VS Code. And I hope to catch you in the next episode when we explore XJS in greater detail.